Hi, my name is Victor Borges from DNVGL Software, and this video is about a specific type of preventive maintenance called plan renewals in Myros. So the main idea around plan renewals is that we can actually offset unplanned repairs by planning an inspection or a re replacement of a specific component in in a equipment item, right? So so the idea here is that we want to understand how often we should. Uh, replace you know the components or perform some sort of a plan maintenance task to avoid failures right so the main idea is that we try to find the balance between the plan uh, maintenance activities and the unplanned failures right so in order to do that let's try to put up a simple model and try to understand how Maros mo simulates this scenario so when I press new the first window we see is the simulator parameters window. If you want to know all the steps to build up a model, please refer to our video building up a Myers model in six steps, right? But for this model, we are going to use a very simple uh, assumption of the 10 years, right? So it's running for 10 years. We have 100 simulations, right? So pretty much 100 life cycles. If I click on product, double click on that, it's oil. And we're going to assume 100,000 barrels, right? Press OK, the failure data will be in years and repair data will be in hours, right? When I press OK to that, uh, the next step's beauty is uh, defining the block flow diagram, and we do that via the equipment catalog, the top one. So we can add, for example, a pumping station, right? So that's our uh, uh, node. So this model has a single node, so I'm going to assume that this is a uh, the only asset we have in this particular system. Uh, I'm not. I'm gonna jump the step of defining the flow. The reason is because Mars can actually automatically set up the flow if I want to assume that I'm utilizing 100% of these nodes, right? So for sim 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 simple models, right, where you have a single node, you can if you're assuming 100% of utilization, I can simply just move on and when I press run Mars is gonna give me a message saying oh do you really want to use a hundred percent of the capacity so so that's a tip for you when I double click that I can actually add a system right and I'm gonna call this the pumping system pumping system right double click on that and I can add a an equipment item right and this is gonna I'm gonna call this pump item the pump item right and in this pump item, I have two failures, right? So I have failure mode one and two. The first one is a critical failure, but the second one is the bearing failure. So, so failure of the bearings, right, of the pump. Uh, the first critical failure, right, happens every, you know, five years. And it takes us, let's say, 24 hours to fix this. The battery failure, we can actually assign some sort of aging uh, failure pattern, right? So it's get, as the older it gets, the more likely it is to fail, right? So in order to model that, we need to use viable distribution, right? So viable is one of the most generic statistical distributions we have. In Mars, we have four different types, and they're just variations of the parameters we have to define the viable, right? So for this one, we're going to pick up the viable no delay. And in order to define the viable with no delay, we need to have two parameters. We need to have the characteristic life and the shape factor. The characteristic life is kind of, you know, a time base, you know, how often it fails, right? So the shape factor is what gonna determine whether we have in what stage of the bathtub curve we are, right? So the bathtub curve is used to define early failures, user for life, or aging, so three different stages of the uh, equipment life cycle, right? Uh, so if you use a shape factor below one, you are in the early failure stage. If you use a shape factor equals one, you are in the user for life stage. And if you use your shape factor more than one, uh, you are in the aging stage. So, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to use uh, aging, and we're going to assume the shape factor equals 2.1, and the characteristic life is 0 0.5, right? So it fails a bit more often. And when it fails, it's very difficult to actually fix this because we need to take parts and all that. We are taking all this into account when it comes to the repair type. And we're going to say, oh, it's going to take us actually 60 hours, you know, for an unplanned repair. Uh, all right, so this model is pretty much done. So let's run it and see the results. Uh, just before running, 
Uh, this is the message I was talking about. So it's not possible to simulate a model without flows being defined. So do you wish all sources to be default to the node capacity in order to run the simulator? And we're going to say yes. We want to save yes. And let's save it. And now we want to run. Run out. All right, so efficiency is 98.4, right? So if you look at the uh, criticality, right, we click on that, we can see that it bumps the main, obviously the main, the only system, uh, equipment item we have. Click on it, the bearing is, is responsible for 96.3% of uh, all the failures, right? So we need to fix this. In order to fix this, we are gonna implement a plan renewal strategy, right? So in order to do that, the first thing we need to do, we need to go back to the asset view, right? And we're gonna say what is the plan maintenance task is actually uh, restarting the reliability of this bearing failure, right? So when I, in order to add plan, plan maintenance, I need to click on the green box. So if I click on that, right? And I can double click on this. I can then add some activities, some uh, schedule activities. So the activity here, I'm gonna call uh, bearing replacement, right? Replacement. Uh, it's a service, right? So I'm just call it a, a service, and it's happening. Let's say every, you know, uh, uh, zero every six months, right? So let's start by every six months, right? There you go. Mars is gonna automatically adjust the start date. And then let's say, because this is in a, in, in a control environment, you know, like we are deciding to shut down the system, uh, it takes much less time. It takes, let's say, uh, 10 hours, right? So after defining the, the plan maintenance the task that is gonna replace the bearing, now we need to connect this to the failure, right? How do we do that? We go to settings and we set up a plan renewal. Just click on that. And now we're gonna add a new item right we're gonna call this plan renew right you can call it let's call a different name actually let's call bearing replacement right and we need to move to the events tab and we're gonna select the initiating event right so you're gonna say uh, the initiating event is the bearing replacement it's this service right so I select that and then what happens to when that event occurs is that the bearing failure is gonna restart counting, you know, like, so it's just like as a brand new. Uh, and I just, if I just go back to the general tab, you can see here there's a, some sort of a, uh, effectiveness to the repair, right? So we can actually say, all right, so maybe it's not like 100% back. So that's one of the things you can do. So I press okay, yeah, that's very simple. That's done, right? So when I, run this, uh, what we should expect to see, we should expect to see some changes to the criticality chart because we have a new element there and we need to see, you know, how often uh, the bearing is actually failing now. So let's run. So there you go. So you got around 0.2% of efficiency increase. When I look into the criticality now, obviously the pump remains the main, you know, uh, item. Uh, the bearing is the pre preventive task. Right, so if I click on that, bearing is now, you know, I mean, much smaller if compared to the first case, but still quite big, right? So one of the things we can do, we can actually um, change the frequency, right? And the easiest way of doing that is using Sensitivity Manager, which I'm gonna show you now.